Today, we're gonna to be making the ultimate chocolate chip muffin using the power of science. Science muffin! I <laughs> gotta drop it. Science muffin. Uh-oh. Ahem, take two. Today, we're going to be making the ultimate chocolate chip muffin using the power of science. Science muffin! Science muffin! Right, well anyway, here's how it happened. I was outside eating a chocolate chip muffin when I noticed something. Hey, I said, there doesn't seem to be a lot of chocolate chips in this chocolate chip muffin because there weren't. Then I was hit by a lightning bolt of inspiration. No, not an actual lightning bolt, it was an idea. But it was such a good idea that it felt like a lightning bolt. It was all like Anyway, I thought to myself, I wonder, uh, are you okay? Do you need a second? Right, okay, so here we go. I thought to myself, I wonder if I could make the ultimate chocolate chip muffin using the powers of science. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Science and muffins don't go together. Of course they do. Just watch me science up a muffin. First, I made an observation, which was the ratio of chocolate chips to muffin in my muffin was unsatisfying. Then I asked a question. Well, let's ask two questions because they can both be answered in the same experiment. Question one, what is a satisfying ratio of chocolate chips to muffin? And question two, what's the most maxed out number of chocolate chips we can have in a muffin? Next, we need some parameters. That's like the rules for your experiment. Now, of course, the maximum amount of chocolate chips in a muffin is well, all chocolate chips, but that can't count. It still needs to be a muffin. You have to look at it and say, yeah, that's a muffin, not that's a bunch of chocolate. Next comes the hypothesis. What do I think will be the right answer? Well, for question one, how about three parts mixed to one part chocolate chips? And for our maxed out muffin? I don't know, how about a ratio of one to one, equal parts mixed to chocolate chips? And now, we get to experimenting. First, I made the muffin mix. Uh, sorry, science muffin mix. Then I measured how much mix I needed to make a muffin, and that turned out to be 80 milliliters. Now, the first muffin is my control muffin. Your control is the thing you don't experiment on, so you can use that to compare your experiments too. In this case, my control muffin would be the shining example of muffinness which I would compare the other muffins to. With 80 milliliters of mix, I was able to do some pretty easy math. Now, ratios are great because it only compares things to each other. I'm comparing the amount of mix to the amount of chocolate chips. So my first muffin had a ratio of seven parts mix to one part chocolate chips, or seven to one. My next muffin, only three parts mix to one part chocolate chips, or three to one. The next muffin was one part mix to one part chocolate chips, or one to one, or the same amount. Now this muffin was one to three. That means one part mix to three parts chocolate chips. Then one part mix to seven parts chocolate chips. And the most ridiculous one, one part mix to 40 parts chocolate chips, or in milliliters, 78 milliliters of chocolate, and two milliliters of mix. And finally, just for the sake of science, no mix at all, only chocolate chips. So let's recap. I've got my control muffin with no chocolate chips, and then ratios of seven to one, three to one, one to one, one to three, one to seven, one to 40, and just chocolate. Maybe we could call this one the control for the chocolate. Then I popped them in the oven and baked. Mmm, smells like science. Once they were done, I compared their muffinness against my control muffin and got ready for the best part of the experiment, which was tasting them. And here's how they stacked up. Seven to one. This is basically the amount of chocolate chips that are in a regular muffin. Boring. Let's go on to the next one. Three to one. You know, it's a generous amount of chocolate chips for a muffin. I don't think we're really gonna impress anyone with this muffin and the amount of chocolate chips in this muffin. 
we definitely need to go further. One to one. That's probably the, the top end of the chocolate o chippiest muffins that you want to have for people who aren't going to really want a lot of chocolate chips in their muffin. But it's pretty good. One to three. I can't really tell much of a difference between this muffin and the muffin that came before it. Nope. One to seven. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. This is a science muffin. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but just for the sake of science, let's go on to the ridiculous muffins. Ridiculo muffin. And one to 40. It's a tiny bit lighter in color than just the chocolate, so you can tell there is a little bit of muffin mix in there, but um, essentially that's just a block of chocolate, which goes outside of our parameters, though, though it's very delicious. And all chocolate, which also falls outside of our parameters because, yeah, that's not a muffin. So it is a solid piece of chocolate, but you can still tell it was chocolate chips when it started, which is kind of neat. It's chocolate. It's not a muffin. It's not a muffin. So, in conclusion, I found that the most satisfying ratio of chocolate chips to muffin was anything up to a one-to-one -one ratio. After that, it gets just a bit too chocolatey. But if you want a maxed out muffin, try a ratio of one part mix to seven parts chocolate chips. It was basically just a full scoop of chocolate chips and the muffin mix just squeezed into the empty spaces. So the next time I was outside eating my muffin, I was eating a science muffin. And I said, science muffin! And then the muffin was all like pew 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 And it was so crazy with science I could barely eat it because it was such an awesome science muffin. And then, what, what? Oh, oh sorry, sorry, there. Is that better? Right. Okay. You, you go ahead and eat the muffin. Oh.